Well, the reviews are out for Hellblade 2 and things are looking kind of mixed, depending on what kind of player you are. Halo Infinite looks to be reaching its final stages when it comes to development, as well as a Modern Warfare 3 hidden cutscene from 2013 re reveals something quite interesting about what they want to do with the future of Call of Duty. So if you're an Xbox fan, you most likely have been following this game in some capacity, Sinuous Saga, Hellblade 2, whichever way you want to pronounce it, but Basically, the game just released, and it's been coming out with some good reviews, some mixed reviews, some terrible reviews. And I think it's one of those games where it's maybe if you don't really get it, you're probably not going to enjoy it. But if you really vibe with a game, like if it was especially enjoyed the Senua's Sacrifice from Hellblade 1, sounds like most likely you're going to enjoy this game as well. Though if you look at the review videos you see on YouTube when you're first typing things out, things are either very bland or not that exciting about the game, which is going to be very interesting again to see like how this whole thing really does play out and how the game really is because you know people out there are trying to get clicks right so it's more likely you're going to click on the video if it says oh my god worst game it sucks and everything compared to like hey this game's actually like pretty good not amazing but not too shabby when it comes to the steam reviews though the game seems to be doing pretty well at 88 percent liked and on metacritic using the professional scoring i guess you want to call it it scored at 81 with the majority of being positive scores so it's not too shabby of a game. Again, it's kind of an interesting aspect of what this kind of game is, right? It's not like your typical game of getting high scores, bleep blue, but you know, save the princess kind of stuff. It's more like an interactive story in a way. So if you get it, you get it and you love it. And if you don't get it, you're like, what's the purpose of this game? It's a walking simulator. And the development team, Ninja Theory, did come out with this post talking about this the night before the release of the game. And people are kind of taking it almost as a farewell letter in a way, because we know how things have been with Microsoft recently. But let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. But before we get into that, did you know that 63% of you guys are watching the channel not subscribed? You're going to stay updated with everything, with gaming, Halo, everything else in between. Make sure you subscribe and let's get right back into those details. So this message from studio head Dom Matthews said this before the launch of the game saying, Hey everyone, as we sit on the eve of the release of Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, I wanted to thank you, our fans, on behalf of everyone here at Ninja Theory. We see you and we hear you. When you give us such love and support, when you tell us how much Senua means to you, when you tell us how much you are looking forward to the next game and how much faith you have in us to continue Senua's story in a way that does justice to the connection so many of you have had to her and to Hellblade. From the beginning of Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, we have had you in mind and I truly hope that when you play the second chapter of Senua's story, you will find that familiar connection once again and that also so many more people will find their way to Senua and her world too. Making video games is difficult. Much like Senua, we as a team have been guided by a conviction to achieve our quest, to make a game that sinks you deep into Senua's world and to take you on a journey that leaves you thinking and feeling. I believe we have achieved our quest and I hope you'll agree. I'm very proud of the game, very proud of our team, and very proud of you, our fans, who have supported us on this magical journey. Thank you, Don Matthew Studio Head. Which I think most people probably just read that go like, no, that was a nice little message. You know, you finally made it to the finish line, making a game like Cinema Saga, or really any major AAA game in general. It's a very tough road, takes a long time, a lot of dedication. And I'm sure there's plenty of bumps that put things in the way, especially COVID during between the time of Hellblade 1 and Hellblade 2. But given the recent news we've had from Xbox with the recent layoffs, right? People are thinking like, oh my God, this is like a farewell letter, right? Especially at the bottom when you say, I believe we have achieved our quest and I hope you agree. But this might not be a farewell message as Jez Corden replied to someone on Twitter saying, except they had their next game already greenlit, which if we go to the, their homepage, we see the list of games that they've worked on, of course, they're talking about Senua Saga Hellblade 2, but then to be announced Project Mara. And the only thing we really can go off when it comes to Project Mara is this trailer that was released a while ago. And basically we don't really know what the game is. This is definitely like an early, just like, 
teaser build to get people excited about what they're doing next. But there is a little bit of a hint of what this next project is going to be like in the description of the video. Saying Project Mara is a real world and grounded representation of mental terror based on real lived experienced accounts and in-depth research with the aim of recreating the horrors of the mind as accurately and realistically as possible. Now for myself, I actually have not played through Hellblade 1, so I'm currently playing through that right now. Got through the first act so far. And from what I've been hearing, that Hellblade 2 is very similar to Hellblade 1 with some minor changes. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a Hellblade review. Leave a red heart in the comments if you guys want to see that review. All right, next, you know we're talking about some Halo, and there's been some really interesting developments of this game recently. One, talking about, talking about like the end of Halo Infinite, basically, and this new mode that was just brought into the matchmaking experience, which was teased earlier in this trailer you're looking at right here. And it looks like we will be getting some more custom made matchmaking experiences from the community. So this is not gonna be just like straight up like map remakes that we've had previously. We're going to have like actual new modes and things to experience within Halo. Crazy, I know, right? So first let's talk about the new thing that just happened within the game, guys. The Combat Workshop has brought in Survive the Undead. This has been a very popular custom game you've seen throughout the Halo Infinite for a long time. This was, was created pretty much when Forge first dropped as one of the first big modes that really came in. And this is a really exciting thing because this is basically Call of Duty Zombies put into Halo Infinite, which again, it's kind of more like a, another recreation of your childhood put into Halo, which is like, another one but still like this is still kind of a cool thing like it's a new experience to have within halo right it's not your remade maps it's not like a remade mode or a mode that's been gone for x amount of years and now brought back so this is a new experience so at least hats off to 343 and the forged falcons for putting this together but you'd be basically playing a little bit of call of duty zombies within halo infinite and apparently it plays out really well i'll definitely jump in and give it a go and kind of give you my thoughts on the whole thing when i actually have some time to play but this mode isn't official yet this is a combat workshop which is interesting because we do know that there will be more custom game modes from the community being put into matchmaking as well. This one in particular will be lasting for the next two weeks for feedback and information about how to improve the mode. Which makes me wonder like why take it away then bring back the singular mode again for like a permanent playlist? I think there's something a little more to this. Because within this trailer that we had right here, which is actually a phenomenal trailer, we had some custom games teased that were made by the community one right here, the Battle Royale mode. And then next we also had the Tower Defense Ultimate mode, which is, you know, ways of enemies just kind of going through different spots and you're just kind of limited to your movement. And then you have the Silent Chronographer campaign mission recreated in the game as well. And then uh, we have now survived the undead. It makes me wonder when the match composer finally does come into this game, if these separate custom games will be part of like the custom game browser, you could select that level or mode specifically that you want to jump in and play for matchmaking. Now it'll be very interesting to see how these actually play out as games like Battle Royale or even Survive the Undead as well. I mean, they even mentioned it within Survive the Undead is that the fact that when you're playing the game and say you die, a lot of these games you kind of have to kind of sit around and just kind of wait. And that's one of the big issues when it comes to matchmaking games that if you're not moving your th sticks for a certain amount of minutes, you're going to get kicked out, which is going to be a real problem with these modes. And within this post about Survive the Undead, they even mentioned that specifically saying, as a note, while waiting to respawn, make sure to wiggle your sticks and keep your thumbs ready for action. Meaning, yeah, if you're idle for too long, you can get kicked out of the game. There are these custom games coming into the game. I feel like kind of ties into the X bit of news we have for Halo Infinite, and that's the end of the service. And I'm sure many of you watching this channel have probably seen Min Blitz's video talking about this. So I'll go over it briefly, but basically within Steam DB, right? They put 343 tends to post different builds to test out like a next patch coming to the game. The thing is, it's been a long time since the last branch was posted on Steam DB. 4343 to test what the next update is going to be. We do know there will be another update coming to the game, but it's been a long time since another branch has been posted, meaning this could be the final actual update to the game. I mean, we do know 343 has stated that they consider Halo Infinite content complete, meaning not really much in the way of the content that they're going to be making is going to be making it into Halo Infinite. And we know that 343 are moving away from Halo Infinite. This time is going to come. There is a very soon end date for Halo Infinite, and it could be 
this July. Because in this customization overview for Content Update 32 for the Banish Honor update that we had, there was a very interesting bit of information towards the bottom where they actually revealed what the next operations are going to be, which was great, we're gonna get them, but there was an interesting naming convention difference right here. So we know we're gonna get 10 Rai 4 coming on June 4th to July 2nd, but then after that one, Spartan Surplus, which is different because all the other types of operations have been very like lore thematic or they've been themed off of previous events, but Spartan Surplus here is just something that just sounds so different than any other kind of naming convention that we've had for operations because I feel like this might be the last operation. And that's mainly because the fiscal year rollover for Microsoft happens in June. And so July might be the last operation to kind of give a nice little hoorah send off to Halo Infinite so then 343 can focus all their efforts in making the next game. Not exactly the 10 year plan that we were all hoping for. And calling it Spartan Surplus just feels like you're just getting like a lot of stuff thrown in at the end, almost like a liquidation sale. Either Tenrai 4 or Spartan Surplus is when we will get this Vestige, which is a re remake of Relic from Halo 2. And when you first look at it, you're like, that looks really cool. But then when you look at the rest of it, it's starting to look very, well, kind of made by Sparrowsoft kind of forging, if we've known anything recently from Halo Infinite. It just doesn't really look that like exciting or inspiring to play where like your community forgers can just nail this out of the park, right? Rival Halo 2 anniversary, I would say even, but this just feels like maybe Sparrowsoft either doesn't know the tools as well, or they just are not given enough time to be able to develop things for Halo Infinite. But I mean, Relic's a fantastic map. I'm definitely looking forward to coming. We do know this is actually happening because it was teased within the first image of the Content32 update that I showcased you guys recently. What's there in the background? Oh, yeah, that's the map relic right there in the background. I'm surprised like not a lot of people pointed this out, which confirmed all the leaks that we talked about previously of relic coming into the game. So you got some classic maps coming in. Again, more remakes, more rehashed memories of what you used to like about Halo being put into Halo Infinite. But you know, it's just like, it's an easy dub. You know, that's part of the reason why they do this kind of stuff. And of course, once we get some more concrete information what's coming next for Halo Infinite, when that end date is actually happening, you know, I'll share with you guys here on the channel. And lastly, guys, I wanna share you this cutscene. This is a cut cutscene from the post credit scenes of Modern Warfare 3 that was basically restored by some people with the coding. And it's very interesting. It kind of shows you what direction they wanted to take the Modern Warfare franchise after Modern Warfare 3 back in 2013, not the weird one that we're playing now. And I'll play it right now for you guys to make your own opinions about it. I always find this stuff so cool because it's something that like the developers wanted to put in but then maybe couldn't fit it in quite right. A lot of people have been speculating who is this shadowy figure that's within this trailer right here because like this is definitely something that you would allude to to be into the next game, right? Some people have stated it's Yuri, some people say it's a Zekaev, some people say some other kind of characters, but I don't really think this was any established character that was in the Modern Warfare series. Mainly because the file names of this character that they found within this cutscene are referred to as the Shadow Man. Not the Shadow Man from Call of Duty Zombies, that's something completely different. And also this was referred to just like ominous figure kind of thing. Like they didn't really give this character a name. So I think this entire scene is really just meant to give you like a tease of like what's gonna happen next, you know, make you think about what's coming because this is an epic conclusion to one of the most epic trilogies of all time for first person shooters in the gaming history. But one thing I'm actually glad they did cut this because this death scene right here for Price very unrewarding, right? Like imagine if that's how you actually died as price in the game through a cutscene, just kind of slumping over without actually like actively being the person in that scene that you died in, right? 
that just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense in my opinion for your main character to die like that and it really kind of closes doors to whatever could come next for the franchise so i can kind of see why they cut that and yeah a lot of people have been searching around like who is this character who are they supposed to be i think that was the idea that you weren't really supposed to know until the actual next game which never really came to fruition which is why that scene was cut and also you had like marvel making post credit cut scenes like super popular so i'm sure call of duty was like yeah let's do that same thing too that'd be awesome but then you know set the seat plant some seeds of what could come next but then actually not come to fruition would just be awful but i always find this stuff super cool like these little hidden gems that were you know thrown away and then recovered by the community they kind of show you like all oh, other stuff that was in the game i'm glad this was cut but i still think it's kind of cool if you guys made it this far into the video you're a real one and i want to see who the real ones are leave a green heart in the comments down below let's confuse all the normies who don't get all the details and i hope i earned a like and subscribe from you guys thank you all so much for watching check out more videos for me right here if you missed any content recently i'll catch you on the next one peace out